the revelation that we are not here waiting for revival, but you are called to be the revival. You are called to be a walking revival. That everywhere you go, you're not waiting for God to move. He's in you and he's moving through you and you become the walking breakthrough. You become the walking move of God everywhere you go. How many feel this, this year, this semester, God wants to do something fresh and new and different in your life? You know, I really believe God wants to sweep across this whole campus and God wants to sweep across your life with a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit that will empower you for every single thing God has called you to do. How many here want the fire of God on your life? How many want the glory of God on your life? How many are hungry for God to do something in your life this year? How many have come here not to waste your time but to invest your time for God to do something life-changing in your life because I really believe that God it's his heart that he pours out his glory on your life I remember in my Bible school days the encounters I had with God during that time changed my life forever and I still remember those encounters with God where the Holy Spirit would come and fill me and anoint me and really prepare me for what would come in the future in my life and I just want to uh, well before I jump into my thoughts for this morning I want to stay connected with you guys. I want to pour into you. So let me just say this. We have a website, mattsorger.com. You could go there. We got tons of free videos for you to watch if you ever want to learn more about the glory, about signs and wonders, about prophetic evangelism, you know, about the power of God. You could go there and watch those teachings. We also have an app that you could download to your phone. So if you see fire coming out of your phone, don't worry. It's just the anointing. And then we got a Facebook page, Instagram page. How many of you guys still use Facebook? Okay. And we got Instagram, so follow us on Instagram. And, you know, me and my wife, I've been married four years now, and we're having a baby in a few months, so we're really excited about the baby coming along. Uh, I fly from here today up to Toronto, Canada uh, to be with my wife, Stephanie, and her whole family because we're doing the baby shower this weekend. So... Uh, we're just celebrating as a family together uh, this new little boy that's coming into the world. Praise God. And, uh, but we did recently a webinar, a free webinar online for singles wanting to know how do you discern the one that God has for you to marry. I think, uh, you know, I think the most important decision besides finding Jesus as your Savior is who, is who you choose as a life partner. And we want to help you. And help singles navigate that whole process. Like, what, is, what does Christian dating look like? Uh, how do you do it effectively um, and accurately and, and correctly? And, you know, all sorts of topics on, on, you know, relationships and finding the one that God has for you. How many want to find the one God has for you? And, le and let me just say, if you don't find them here, okay, don't freak out. God still has them for you. Okay, when I went to Bible school, you know, they used to call, they didn't call it Bible school, they called it bridal school, you know, because everyone was looking for their husband or their wife at Bible school. But, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's on our Facebook page. If you go there, you'll see, just look through the Facebook page and you'll find the free webinar that me and my wife did uh, about how to, you know, we share our marriage testimony, how, how we met and the process that we went through. In, in dating and courtship and then, you know, eventually marriage and what that looked like. So we just want to help you guys in that area of your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't worry, you won't be a bachelor to the rapture. I know Jesus is coming back again, but you will be married before he comes back. Don't worry. <laughs> Look, all the married people, they're praying for the rapture, okay? They're praying, God, they're praying, Jesus, come quickly, you know? And then, you know, all the singles are praying, oh, God, send my spouse, God. You know, so everyone's crying, everyone's praying. It's okay, God hears all the prayers, and he'll answer. <laughs> How many want to see God's power flow through your life? How many want to lay hands on the sick and see him healed? How many want to have a dangerous shadow, like I was talking about the other day? Where you just are like Peter and you walk down the street and people get healed just by you walking by them. Because I really believe the type of movement that's coming of the anointing where time and space is not going to limit the anointing that's on you. It's like even, even geographic boundaries aren't going to limit the healing anointing that God puts on your life. You know, there's different types of moves of the spirit and different types of healing waves that have happened in the earth. 
You know, and many times, you know, we've seen the model where someone lays hands on the sick, and as they lay hands on the sick, and that's 100% biblical, that the sick get healed. But I believe there's also another type of healing anointing where it's more of an atmosphere of healing where you just walk into a city and everyone in the city gets healed. Or you just speak a word here and someone miles away gets healed. I mean, Jesus operated in that. He, he showed us the example when, when you know, the, the centurion came and he had his, you know, servant sick. And Jesus is like, I'll come and heal him. And he's like, no, don't, don't even come. Just, you know, just speak the word and it will happen. And Jesus spoke this word and an anointing was released that bypassed geographic boundaries. And this man was healed miles away from where Jesus was. So I believe you could carry an anointing on you where people even miles away get healed because of what's on your life. Hallelujah. We've seen it happen. We were in one meeting, and God gave me a word of knowledge. And I'll talk a little bit about words of knowledge here. God gave me a word of knowledge for a woman in the meeting whose son was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Well, she came under the anointing in that meeting. Her son, who was not even seeking God, he wasn't even praying for freedom. He was miles away somewhere else. At the same exact moment the anointing touched her, her son instantly got delivered from drugs and alcohol. And he called his mom and said, Mom, I'm free from drugs. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, it just left me. And the mom said, when did that happen? And it was the exact moment she touched the anointing in that meeting. And guys, I really believe, take the limits off of God. Take the limits off of what he can release in you and through you. You can carry so much of the glory and have that anointing flow out of you that even bypasses geographic boundaries. Praise the Lord. I believe God wants to raise up reformers, radical, revivalists who will shake nations today. I believe God has nations for you. I believe he has whole cities for you, whole territories for your life to influence. That when you walk into that city, God walks in with you. When you walk into that country, God walks in with you. And he, give you, he gives you the supernatural keys that unlocks the glory of God that sees entire people groups get saved. That sees entire cities get saved. God wants us to take the limits off. And in the glory, the limits come off. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for your destiny. I'm excited for how God's going to use you. And if you totally surrender and give your life over to him, there is no limit to what you can do. There is no limit. And sometimes people say, well, should I do this? Should I do that? I say you could do it all. You could have it all. You could have everything God has for you. You don't have to limit yourself. So... I believe that when the glory comes in, the limits come off. I remember I was in a meeting, and this is what happens when you touch the glory. I was in a meeting, and I remember I was standing on this, the right side of the platform, and as I'm standing there just worshiping God, suddenly it's like the atmosphere changed, and the glory came in. The glory of God came in, and I remember lifting my hands over my head, and it was like my hands went right into the tangible glory of God. It felt like electricity in the air over my head, and I ran across the platform to the other minister that was there, and I said to him, lift up your hands. The glory, is, the glory cloud is right over us, and we lifted up our hands into what felt like the electric presence of God. And as we connected with the glory, miracles, I mean, there was maybe 2,000 people in this meeting. Miracles broke out en masse. I mean, tumors started dissolving, blind eyes started opening, deaf ears started popping open, and no one even laid hands on anyone. It was an atmospheric move of the Holy Spirit, where as we, as leaders, connected to God's manifest glory, it opened up something over all the people where they just stepped right into their healing. And I believe you can so connect with God's glory in your life that you carry that presence with you, not just in a church meeting, but even when you're out on the street. Everywhere you go. And I really, you know, I have changed my preaching on revival. I used to always preach, revival's coming, revival's coming. And one of the things you have to be careful of, even if you're prophetic, because prophets tend to see in the future. And if we're not careful, we can prophesy what's coming in the future. But then what happens is we create a culture without even realizing it where breakthrough is always in the future or healing is always in the future or revival is always in the future. So we're always running after it but never quite getting it. 
And I don't think God wants us always running after something and never quite getting it. I think God wants to give us a revelation that we are not here waiting for revival, but you are called to be the revival. You are called to be a walking revival. That everywhere you go, you're not waiting for God to move. He's in you and he's moving through you and you become the walking breakthrough. You become the walking move of God everywhere you go. You're shifting atmospheres. You're partnering with heaven to see heaven on earth. So I've changed my preaching. I don't just preach about what's coming. I preach about what God's doing right now. I preach about the access he's given us right now to his glory, to, to living in that realm. Like Ephesians says, you are seated in heavenly places far above every power and principality. You are not warring today to break through the enemy. You're warring today from an established victory already in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In any area of your life that you have come to Bible school with, struggling with, you're not warring for a breakthrough. You already have the breakthrough. You just got to get the revelation of what Jesus has accomplished for you. And through that revelation, access the finished work of Christ on the cross and then see it manifested in your life and through your life. Thank you so much for listening to today's message. As the word has blessed you, I'm going to ask you to partner with the anointing on this ministry. Your partnership will help us reach more lives for Jesus. We love our partners and pray daily for you. As a partner, you will receive an exclusive online library of Matt's monthly partner teachings. To partner, visit mattsorger.com. You can also download Matt's app to get free webinars, live stream access, episodes of Matt's TV show, Unstoppable God, the free audio Bible, and more. Just search for Matt Sorger Ministries in your app store. For great teaching resources, visit mattsorger.com. And to join Matt's mentoring community, go to mattsorgermentoring.com. Go and be a blessing today and touch someone's life with God's love.